I'd um, always done a lot of comedy at university and I was in a nice little group of people who were writing new material, comedy and straight um, dramas and things and um, did lots of performing and went to the Edinburgh Festival and so on, um, which I really enjoyed. And then when I left university, I actually worked in TV production for about five years. Um, and I kept bumping into people that I had gone to university with and they kept saying, oh, I really thought you'd be doing more performance and writing. So in the end, I think I thought, oh, maybe I thought that too. <laughs> so um, I wrote myself some sketches and monologues and I booked some open spots in pubs that were doing sketch comedy live in London. And I just started doing three, four, five gigs a week. And um, I got involved with a, an amazing group called Ealing Live, uh, which doesn't run anymore, but used to be a group of live sketch comedians. And we would put on a completely new show every Thursday at the Ealing Studios. And a lot of people would come and watch it. And industry people would often come and see it. And so. I got in with a really fast moving group of people and I did a show at the Edinburgh Festival and that show got picked up for a TV series, um, amazingly. And then uh, here I am now really, I just sort of tried to just keep working as hard as I can and making opportunities for myself and things and um, yeah, I'm just very fortunate. From a comedy point of view, I mean, definitely uh, French and Saunders was a huge thing. Uh, as I was sort of, you know, in my teens, you know, I thought they were just hilarious. Um, and people like Kathy Burke, um, Carolina Hearn, you know, they were all very um, big as I was sort of coming up and I just ate up everything they did. Um, so definitely on television, I had that very strong vein and, and also there were kind of very dark strange comedies that were sort of floating around the schedules very late at night when I should have been in bed um, so things like the kids in the hall which was a very odd Canadian sketch show that I sort of stumbled across uh, and, and stayed up to watch and then people like the divine David that was a character that David Hoyle um, uh, had uh, around that time as well and then sort of 90s that was really odd and rude and anarchic and um, just said anything he felt like. Uh, and I just, I found it really thrilling. So I sort of had this sort of quite mainstream television comedy thing going on, but also these sort of very odd late night um, things that perhaps were not even funny sometimes. Um, and I just loved both those things at once. And then sort of from a film point of view, I think um, Woody Allen's, uh, earlier films have been a massive part you know I must have watched Husbands and Wives about 35 times um, so that's something that I definitely aspire to you know I'm nowhere near anything close to that yet but you know I uh, that's something I've always got in the back of my mind is something I would you know I would love to be able to even come close to that someone once says to me about um, the sort of showbiz <laughs> industry you know they said, just remember, um, it's not fair and be on time. And I think those two things are the kind of twin pillars uh, of life. You know, every time you sort of start to complain about something, you know, you've just got to remember it's not fair. It's not a fair business. Um, and you just have to work as hard as you can and develop quite a tough exterior and just sort of keep going, you know, tirelessly keep going, keep going. And um, if you really think you've got something, then just just keep doing it and and don't expect to be paid for a really long time. <laughs> and even when you get a job that is paid, don't expect the next one to be paid. And you know, it, it, the the people in this business want a lot for free, especially from writers and performers. And you know, you do have to stand your ground from time to time, but you have to expect to be doing things for nothing a lot of the time. Um, uh, especially until you can sort of get your head above water. So it's just a sort of strange combination of having a lot of energy, a lot of enthusiasm, a tinge of madness, and um, a credit card <laughs> that you can live on for as long as possible. <laughs> um, so yeah, I've, uh, you know, you'll meet some amazing people, and, and if you stick with those people and remain friends with them, 
you end up in quite a nice little nest of, you know, like-minded souls that will stick around for a long time. <laughs>